Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hold on, cadets. Like, I gotta bring up the chat uh, stream. Make sure everything's going through okay. All right. Hello, hello, hello. How are all of y'all? <laughs> um, I hope y'all are having a wonderful day or night or afternoon wherever y'all are on Earth. So I'm your beloved Commander D. How are all y'all? Uh, using Ava Kit again for chatting, like chatting sessions using Ava Kit. So as y'all all like. A lot of things have been recently added, and I'm so glad. So I can keep track things now more on the chat side of things, you know, like. So let's get started, because it's late night where I am in the galaxy, and I am eating supper. And I'm going to talk about my D&D campaign, but first, like, if there's any users up, any, uh, people out there in chat, you know, like, have your voice heard, how's y'all's day? Like, how's it going? Cadets, how are y'all? Uh, I would love to hear how y'all are doing right now. So, I think that's kind of important to talk to my cadets like that, you know? Well, let's, uh, let's move on, I guess. So, D&D campaign tonight actually went over pretty darn well. Uh, first, I need to talk about my D&D &D character again. Like, his name is obviously from my YouTuber's tag because my dungeon master found it simple and easy, like Commander Devin. So, that's what he went with, and, like, I kind of like it. So, my character is a soldier uh, he was a leader of a unit you know they went to go after this shard of a legendary dorgan that got corrupted due to an experiment and because of this experimentation it made him evil you know yada yada this yada yada that you know like dragon went and bad who would have thought oh no experiment gone wrong how could this be? And, well, can I? You know, all that. So, yeah. It's quite interesting, actually. And... Like, did somebody show up in chat, I wonder? Or, like, here on the stream, because, like, holy crud. Like, I think there's a lag input. Like... Interesting. All right. So yeah, well, my uh, my D and D character is a warrior that had a battalion go into this infernal hellhole to secure a dark shard, and this dark shard ended up like trying to uh, corrupt my character. I had to overall like be contained and kind of like brought back to uh, mental fortitude, I guess, is how I should put it, like become mentally stable, I guess. Uh, at this, uh, during like the backstory of my uh, character, you know, wife got murdered by a jealous lover. A jealous lover split her herself off into three demonic succubus sisters. And we'll get into, like, what I did in the campaign here in a minute. So, I'm just getting y'all an update, like, what happened on my D&D &D campaign. 
and what's been going on with my first D&D group. As ye. I actually really, really love playing Dungeons and Dragons. At one time, I thought it would never be for me, right? I thought it would never be for someone like me. But, uh, I can admit I could be proven wrong. And I'm so glad that I am. I have been proven wrong. Um, from time and time. I'm, I'm not a man that is afraid to be admit that I'm proven wrong. And it's really been helping me with my own, like, D and D builder, you know, like, well, story building with my VTuber. Uh, hold on, like, I got somebody that sent me a text. Thank you, Anya. I'm doing well. I'm streaming right now. Kind of busy tonight. Have a nice night or morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Take care. All right, so let's continue. Uh, yeah, so all in all, actually a really interesting sight uh, to behold my character. It literally just followed the trope of the Doom guy, you know, Doom guy uh, from Doom. So, cell phones popping off with messages right now. Uh, wife ended up getting murdered, uh, seeking vengeance for a dead wife in a fallen kingdom, all that kind of stuff. Kinda of really busy right now. Streaming as of right now. So, really much of an inconvenience. We'll talk later. But, uh, yeah, so continuing on. So. All in all, it's an interesting turn of events. Now my character's in the main story and I'm trying to take down the evil jealous lover. That is literally just a repurposed version of Oshie Williams. I like what I did with that. My dungeon master like really likes a lot of my ideas. It's really fun. He's a really fun guy, okay? And luckily, hopefully, oh, God dang it! Um, messages coming in left and right. <laughs> Sorry, like I'm a gentleman, right? When I receive a message, like I gotta look at it or at least answer back. Like what the heck? Uh, this is the type of guy I am. Anyways, uh, continuing on. <sighs> So I'm in the story and like, I'm trying to collect the three gems to my sword. My legendary sword is called Tidal Breaker. It can command three elements, wind, water, and fire. Basically allowing me to uh, control the elements of wind, water, and fire and send them out as elemental slash waves. Kind of like what Optimus Prime's like, uh, Starbreaker Saber, you know? Like, no joke, no scam. I can send out three elemental wave slashes against my opponents. It's a lot of fun. Uh, today, I ended up procuring one of the gems. I ended up procuring the water gem for this blade of Tidal Breaker. So I got the water first. That's fun. I wonder what I'm going to get next from one of the Succubus sisters. Because I ended up tricking her, right? Like, she uh, ended up throwing out a challenge. 
and to secure this kingdom in a peaceful resolution, right? But there was no peaceful resolution with a succubus, uh, evil succubus, right? So, like, she, I issued a challenge. The succubus accept. Um, I had to fight one of her uh, minions. Uh, one of her master's minions that basically is some, uh, one of my old battalion that, uh, literally become an undead, like, I don't know, plague soldier, right? Like a soldier that is literally caught all this, like, disease that uh, spreads and rusts everything, corrodes and slowly kills off the land underneath it. Like, I ended up fighting it and... I ended up getting my water gem. Now, quite interesting, I tried to slash it with my sword and it slashed my armor. And it kind of corroded my armor while also putting like a, a bit of a, a bit of a like sickness on my character. So I'm gonna have to get that removed with one of, um, one of my teammates. Um, next section. Uh, it's called blight, basically. Like, I'm blighted, so I'm gonna have to remove the blighting as I'm gonna have to go with like the guy that's the ordeal, the travel type deal, and like pay him a little bit of gold and silver, and go like, here, get rid of the sickness, please. I can't deal with this. <laughs> like it's I go me. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So all in all, it was a lot of fun. Um, how I ended up dealing with the succubus though today like one of the one of the three sisters of ashi right one of the three vestiges or sisters of ashi um well she was up there sitting on a throne watching the battle and after i hit a cross bolt on the um like undead soldier that it seems we were in this like giant like uh, how do you put it? Undead dragon that was a kingdom, right? There was a Warforged kingdom that their castle turned into a giant mechanical, like, dragon. And then there was a Necromancer kingdom that the dragon became a undead Necromancer dragon. And I was stuck inside of it, so it was, like, Joey, because, like, he's part of the campaign. And, like, we are stuck inside this Gorgon and the others are, are like fighting like this evil, um, like draconic army that's trying to attack the Warforged Kingdom, right? And so, and there's this huge overall like Warforged mech that was trying to destroy the kingdom that they ended up destroying. It was so classic. Oh my god. Like, they basically, like, the. Plasmoid, the slime uh, character amongst our group, ended up merging with all these other plasmoids and making a gigantic form of a plasmoid and just ended up doing a drop kick of the no longer working giant mechanoloid and just dropping it on the <laughs> enemy army like splat. Like splat. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> Oh my god, like, our, like the lady that does the plasmoid, she is brutal. Like, she ended up killing an NPC that was looking at some files that were making the more forge back. Like, this guy was a prisoner, right, in forced labor. He's like, oh, I just want to get this done with and see my kid and wife again. And she's like, I'm going to kill him. She threw a psychic dagger, and literally just like paralyzed them in the neck and like, He's slowly bleeding out, and she's like, I don't care if you're innocent or not. I'm Batman, and this is justice. <laughs> and the guy's like, take this letter to my wife. She goes, this is what you get for working with the enemy team. <laughs> Ended up tearing the letter apart. <laughs> No, like this lady, I would not want to make mad. Oh, no. <laughs> no, like, have you ever heard, heard the reference of a woman scorn? Like, never take a woman off unless you want a woman scorn. You do not want that. 
You do not want a lady mad at you. Oh, and this lady, like, <laughs> she was just role playing, but I can tell, like, nah, I would not want to make her bad on a bad, on a good day. <laughs> All right, she's having the best day of her life, and I would not want to make her mad even on her worst day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but she she's a good person. She's a good lady. She was just role playing with her character, and it was a lot of fun. Oh, uh, yeah. So. We ended up fighting out our wizard amongst the group, you know. His father was working on the war board mech against his will. And ended up giving a gauntlet that can control time for, like, his character. That is some female wizard, right? Um, so, got the gauntlet, right? So, can move forward and can slow down or speed up time for about six seconds. Nice. I really like that. And he got that. I got the gym. Paladin got a little bit of justice because he ended up flying into the enemy's like, like um, flying ship and just like wrecking the heck out of a whole bunch of the enemy soldiers. Like um, he ended up just destroying them with his like axe, just flying around with like his holy axe and like carving up the enemy soldiers inside and doing a lot of damage to the ship. Eventually, like, he tries to save the wizard's, like, father, but he's like, nah, fam, I'm fine. Like, right now, I'm gonna go into this portal with this dude, and we'll meet again. And, like, they go in the portal, and, like, Paladin ends up slamming right into the control panel of the ship, alright? Like, the control panel that literally flies the ship. Um, thing comes crashing down to the ground below. And the funniest thing, that's not even the funniest thing. The ship, as he was flying underneath to avoid the cannons, was firing on its own soldiers on the ground. That is so insane, and I love it. I love it. Oh. <laughs> and, like, the guy that is literally the paladin, like, his father was commanding the ship, and he's like, I want my son alive! <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> it's so much like this group is just such a ragtag group of like awesome people that are really supportive and kind of yours truly and just invited me in and I still feel a little socially awkward because like this is my first campaign and you really are. Like I don't care who you are, where you come from and like how good you are with people or not. When you go in your first D and D campaign, you feel socially awkward. You feel like the outcast, right? You're the new guy. You don't know any of this. You don't know how it works. And it's your first time, and it's really socially awkward. That's where it relies on everybody else, you know, to pick up your slack and help you out. And they have been doing that with me, right? They've been very patient, kind, understanding. They understand that I'm a very blunt, if not blunt. Uh, in general, because, like, I can't pick up on certain things, right, with the DM, like, and the DM understands that, but I just understand, the DM understands as well, like, I should let him, like, play out his character, but everyone else, like, no, 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 like, your turn's done, it is, like, time for the next person, I was like, okay, I was gonna play into that. That, but they said, no, 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 DM said it, said it was done, like, wait for your next turn, I go, fine, 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 oh, I was going to play into the continuation, but they didn't let me, so, but, uh, they were right, um, you know, it was, we were running out of time, and we needed 30 extra minutes to get it done, now, with Ashi's demon sister, so I think I'm going to call one Ashi, like the main one Ashi, one Soshi, and one Moshi. So Moshi, Soshi, and Ashi, right? So the one I ended up hitting was Soshi. Like Soshi, I decided to add the water gym to my crossbow, my cr one-handed crossbow, bow, bolt, uh, gun, and I go like, and I already had an electric gym inside, I go, like, and I combined water with electricity. If y'all don't know, like, water conducts electricity. 
and in D and D, it doubles the electrical damage, right? It doubles it. So the crossbow ends up hitting like the enemy. Like I had to roll a d20 to see if it hit, and then I had a uh, roll a d6. And what the D6 came to was naturally, like, I rolled a 2. But I got a 2 for a plus and a 4 for dexterity. So it came to 4 in dexterity. And it came to, like, I think it was a 15 to hit. Or 18, I can't remember. It was one of the two. And it ended up hitting, like, Soshi, right? So she ended up getting hit. And she took a lot of damage. Because, like, the electrical energy was normally 5, but with water infused with it, it did 10. And then it also did the regular damage of 15. So it did around, like, 24, 25 damage altogether on her. And it crippled her. And, like, the enemy soldiers had to pick up Soshi and drag her away. Like, I kind of, like, I hate to think, like... Oh, this ain't over. I'll be back. I'm gonna make you pay for what you've done to me. Oh, oh you are such a, uh, an overall goody goody two shoe human. I'm gonna make sure you pay. Like, I see that as Succubus going like that. That's <laughs> being drugged away by the like evil knights. That's a lot of fun to think about. <laughs> I was like, send a message to Oshi. As I load a crossbow and put it at the gyms, I go, Tell her I'm coming for her next. An hasta la vista, baby. And I just fired the crossbow and it hit her spot on between the boobs. I love it. Right there in the chest. And it literally hurt. Oh, it almost ended her. Like the uh, a sister, like the um, splintered half of Oshi, that is a sister now, a succubus sister. It almost ended up ending her. I needed six more damage to put an end to it. But I only did like 24 damage, so I'm not going to argue. That was epic as heck. I loved it. Oh, man. Like, for my character, that was probably like catharsism, right? Like, it was, it was like, oh, that felt good. So, nah, I really like that. But you bet that Succubus is gonna be pick now. Because I ended up taking one of my gems that the three Succubuses have of my sword and getting it back. Here's the thing about the gems about my sword, though. Uh, title Breaker. The gems can be implemented in other weapons, but they're mainly meant for Tidal Breaker. Because Tidal Breaker is the only sword they can bring out their true potential. Everything else is quite nerfed. For their potential, right? So, even though it was nerfed in the crossbow, it still did a lot of damage, right? And we ended up calling it a session after like the two dragon brothers from the two kingdoms be like, Nah fam, we cool. We cool. Let's fly off into the sunset together. You know, let's overall, let's go to the bar, have a couple of dragon brewskis, you know. Like, let's talk about dad. Let's have the good old times. <laughs> I truly love that. Oh my God, that was so much fun. I loved it. Oh, you love happy endings. The war mat got thrown apart. One of the, uh, the, Two kingdoms that are fighting over the planet literally just lost a huge chunk of their uh, army. A giant mech fell on top of them. They lost a wo flying warship. You gotta love it, right? <laughs> now, we are just causing a lot of collateral damage as well. We are like, nah, nah, just, just frick it, you know, just frick it. Like, collateral damage everywhere. <laughs> collateral damage. We don't care how much we cause as long as we take down the enemy and bring peace. Like, collateral damage everywhere. <laughs> oh, it's, oh. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh. Like, before then, like, we brought peace to a vampiric prince and all that. I talked about that on a previous D&D &D campaign. Oh, you gotta love this. So, from the first episode of me being brought into the party and the dragon, like the evil Dorgan, 
coming back, being reconstituted back to life, to obviously saving a temple full of like nuns and priests, then moving on to a village uh, that's run by an evil vampire king. We assassinated, by the way. We assassinated an evil vampire king. That was epic. I love that. Paladin got his moment to shine in that one. Mm. Love it. And then obviously this uh, this one we ended up like obviously saving the Warforged Kingdom and saving the Necromancer Kingdom. And between the two of them, now they're part of the Alliance. That's so cool. And the village in the middle, because there's two kingdoms and a village in the middle, they're all at peace. And they're all part of like the Alliance to take down this evil kingdom. The, these two evil like forces like evil dragon and the evil kingdom trying to take over the planet and like so cool we're doing so much uh epicness right our next plan is either like fighting an evil purple dragon supposedly that fires out plasma fire breath or uh going to an outpost of these uh like draconic like evil knights like fiery knights it's one or the other. Um, I'm hoping we're going after the Dorgan next. Because if we can, like, supposedly have, like, the dragon, like, be like, Oh, you people ain't so bad. And, like, I've heard about this other guy, and he's a pain in the ass. And, like, I'd rather be the bigger pain in the ass than him. So, I'll join you for now as long as I get to be the new pain in the ass. And, like, that's the way I'm going to... Uh, that's the way I hope it's going to be. And we get this dragon on our side to literally take care of the... Uh, the Crimson Knights. That, uh, the Draconic Crimson Knights. That will be so much fun. It will be so much fun to have, like, a dragon literally just burning the enemy to death with plasma fire. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> So, yeah, our D&D &D campaign went over pretty well tonight. Um, for the rest of my day, it was pretty, like, bland. Like, I'm currently eating uh, supper. I need to eat it. Like, I'm also... Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Now I got a situation on Steam again. Now, my local uh, residential spy ended up giving me some information. Like, hold on. This, this is bad. Um, it's back on the run. This guy is literally causing me troubles, all right? I don't know what to tell you, Joke Train. It's not me. And as far as this goes, this person's just throwing a big fit. Because I ended up blocking them and muting them again. Like, I gotta settle this shit. This is just some whiny little brat that wants to take my credibility. I don't play Team Fortress 2. I'll never play Team Fortress 2 again.
And I guess I gotta make a video on this now, huh? Jesus, not this shit again. Last thing I want to do is put up with this crap from Steam. Now this is some whiny little brat that's literally so fucking sore. Er, cadets. Oh my non-existent god. Like, it's not even installed on my PC right now. It's not installed on my PC, cadets. I'm not planning to play Team Fortress 2 ever again because of this shit. Oh my god. Such a freaking pain that I gotta put up with these... Steam... Twats. These twats on Steam are. We're just gonna call them Steaminoids. Okay, like these people that are, are causing me trouble on Steam, they're Steaminoids. I don't play Team Fortress 2. I won't play it again because of these Steaminoids. Oh, now I'm gonna have to make a video and I'm gonna have to update my profile saying to all these Steaminoids. I don't play Team Fortress 2, it's not even installed. Oh, now this just causes me pain. Just a little bit, though. It's kind of like, obviously, you have a pebble in your shoe. And it's just tickling you. Like, that's all this person's doing. Ugh. Oh, God. All right, everyone. Like, I gotta go. I gotta take care of this now, right? Like, all these steaminoids out there that are literally just being the way they are are just such freaking failures, all right? <sighs> Thank y'all so much for joining me. I gotta deal with this crud. I've been your beloved Commander D of Seed Next Gen. And... I'll see y'all on the next planet. I'll stream again tomorrow. Tomorrow, hopefully, like, there's gonna be a game. Like, what is on the itinerary, though? I wonder. Hold on, like, I'm double-checking my itinerary for Saturday. Ah, Pal World. We're going back to Pal World this Saturday. Good. It's about time. Uh, made a few changes to the base since last time. Even more so, uh, y'all may have saw on Twitter slash X I posted, like, the thing about the crude oil extractor. Oh my god, that thing takes so much power. It's a nightmare. Like, just two small generators... And less than five to seven seconds loses all of their power at 100%. Now, I'm not a fan of that power world. You're going to have to adjust that thing's power out out output because uh, power intake, you know, right? Because for me to run that thing in just a small little facility like I am with just that, with just that surrounded around a gate, a power world like obviously... A um, PC thing, two generators, and walls all around of wood and stone, and a stone like ground is literally just showing that that thing takes so much power, it's insane. They're gonna have to redo that power source, that power like drainage from the generators. Like, I do not want to build. Three giant sized generators just to run one oil extractor. Just one. That would take a hundred electrical organs. That will also take over 200 palladium ignigates. 
for just one of those things. So I would need 200 electrical organs. I would need that of over 400 palladium ignigates to make two of those generators to run just one oil extractor. That is a nightmare. That is a nightmare. I do not like that uh, in Power World. Probably the biggest complaint with the update is the oil extractor and how much power it takes. I have a problem with. I will be releasing a um, video on it very soon, like a level 50 retrospective. Uh, once I start or er, I unlock all the items in the menu from level 50, right? Like all the buildable items. Uh, thank you all so much. I have been your beloved Commander D. And I will see y'all in the next one. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, what the heck? Uh, I'm calling it a night. Thanks, everyone. Uh, can't believe I gotta go on my way to address this again. Ah, oh. those steaminoids, those steamy maggots. Oh, I'm gonna have to do something about this. <laughs>